Hello dear students, today we are going to discuss a very important topic, role of All India Council for Technical Education, that is AICTE. Before going through this lecture, first let's have a look on its objectives. First, to study the factors that lead to the development of the All India Council for Technical Education. Second, to look into organization of All India Council for Technical Education. Third, to study the objectives, vision and mission of the All India Council for Technical Education. And fourth, to study the role and functions of the All India Council for Technical Education. The aim of any country's higher education system is sustainable development and achieving higher growth rates. It is enabled through creation, transmission and dissemination of knowledge. The All India Council for Technical Education has been in existence since November 1945 as a national level apex advisory body with its mission of developing and promoting quality technical education in the country in a coordinated and integrated manner. The Council's constant endeavour is to encourage a meaningful association between the technical education system and research and development activities in a concerned effort aimed at nation building. Dear students, let us discuss the historical background of AICTE. The beginning of formal technical education in India can be dated back to the mid 19th century. The major policy initiatives in the pre-independence period included appointment of the Indian Universities Commission in 1902, issue of the Indian Education Policy Resolution in 1904, the Governor General's Policy Statement of 1913 stressing the importance of technical education, the establishment of IISC in Bangalore, Institution for Sugar, Textile and Leather Technology in Kanpur, NCE in Bengal in 1905 and industrial schools in several provinces. The significant developments in the formation of AICTE include first, constitution of the Technical Education Committee of the Central Advisory Board of Education of 1943, second, preparation of the Sergeant Report of 1944, and third, Formation of the All India Council for Technical Education in 1945 by the Government of India. AICTE was established on the basis of recommendations provided by the Central Advisory Board of Education CABE, in order to stimulate, coordinate and control the provisions of educational facilities and industrial development of the post-war period. At that time, AICTE covers only technological and engineering programs. After independence, there was expansion in technical education, particularly in 60s and again in 80s. In 1964, one of the famous education commissions in India, known as Kothari Commission, provides an important recommendation regarding the technical education in India. It states, to ensure the pursuit of the highest standards at the first degree and postgraduate levels and to provide an adequate machinery with the national and professional concern with the future development at these levels, we have recommended the setting up of a UGC type organization, industry and concern ministries. This body should have a full time chairman and funds should be allotted to it on the block basis. Later, in 1986, new policy on education made a special mention of the need to make AICTE a statutory body, with a view to ensure the proper planning and coordinated development of technical education system throughout the country, AICTE was given statutory powers by the AICTE Act of Parliament in 1987. Technical education in this context includes fields of engineering and technology, architecture, town planning, management, pharmacy and applied arts and craft. After achieving the status of statutory body, AICTE has initiated necessary steps for planning, formulation and maintenance of norms and standards, accreditation, funding of priority areas, monitoring and evaluation of courses or programs in the field of technical education to ensure coordinated and integrated development of technical education in the country. 
in order to achieve the planned growth and to nurture quality in technical education system, AICTE has spared no effort to inculcate competitiveness to face the globalization and in generating competence and quality in technically qualified human resources to make it globally acceptable. Now, let's discuss the organization of All India Council for Technical Education. As per the provision of the AICTE Act 1987, for the first five years after its inception in 1988, the Minister for Human Resource Development, Government of India, was the chairman of the council. The first full-time chairman was appointed on July 2, 1993, and the council was reconstituted in March 1994 with the term of three years. The Executive Committee was reconstituted on July 7, 1994 and All India Boards of Studies and Advisory Boards were constituted in 1994-95. Regional Offices of the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India, located at Kolkata, Chennai, Kanpur and Mumbai, were transferred to AICTE and the staff working at these offices were also deputed to the Council on Foreign Service Terms with effect from October 1, 1995. These offices functioned at secretariats of regional committees in the four regions, that is, East, South, North and West. Three new regional committees in Southwest, Central and Northwest regions with their secretariats located at Bangalore, Bhopal and Chandigarh, respectively, were also established on July 27, 1994. One more regional committee in South Central Region with its secretariat at Hyderabad was notified on March 8, 2007. After 2007, three more regional centers were included to AICTE. These are located at Guwahati, Mayur Bhavan and Trivanthapuram. At present, there are total 11 regional centers associated with AICTE. The AICTE has its headquarters in New Delhi and is presently housed in a building having a covered area of 12,187 square feet, located on 7th floor of Chandarlok building, Janpat, New Delhi. The statutory bodies of AICTE as prescribed by the Act are first Council, second Executive Committee, 3rd Regional Committee and 4th All India Board of Studies. The Council consists of a 51-member body and has a Chairman, Vice-Chairman and Member Secretary who are full-time tenure appointments and include amongst others representatives of various departments of Government of India, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha, Government of State and Union Territories professional bodies and organizations in concerned areas of technical education and research, and representatives from industry, commerce, etc. The Council performs its function in consultation with state government, universities, state boards of technical education, professional bodies and experts. The prime step of the Council is to take all such steps as it may think fit for ensuring coordinated and integrated development of technical and management education and maintenance of standards. The Executive Committee is of 21-member body constituted by the Council and discharges such functions as may be assigned to it by the Council. The Executive Committee is chaired by the Chairman of the Council and includes Vice Chairman of the Council, Education Secretary to the Government of India, two Chairmen of the Regional Committees, three Chairmen of the All India Board of Studies, one Member of the Council representing the Ministry of Finance of Central Government, four Members of the Council representing States or Union Territories, four members with expertise and distinction in areas relevant to technical education, chairman of the University Grants Commission, director of the Institute of Applied Manpower Research, director general of Indian Council of Agriculture and Research. The AICTE Act provided for the establishment of five boards of studies. However, the Council was empowered by the Act to establish such other boards of studies as it may think fit. Presently, there are 10 All India Boards of Studies in various sectors of technical education. These are All India Board of Vocational Education All India Board of Technician Education All India Board of Undergraduate Studies in Engineering and Technology All India Board of Postgraduate Education and Research in Engineering and Technology 
All India Board of Management Studies, All India Board of Pharmaceutical Education, All India Board of Hotel Management and Catering Technology, All India Board of Information Technology, All India Board of Town Planning, All India Board of Architecture. Each board of studies has about 15 members and is headed by subject experts of eminence. These boards advise the executive committee on academic matters falling in their areas of concern including norms, standards, model curricula, model facilities and structure of courses and all other areas of academic development in their respective fields. The AICTE Act provided for the establishment of four regional committees. However, the Council was empowered by the Act to establish such other regional committee as it may think fit. Presently, there are eight regional committees. These regions are Central Region, Western Region, South Western Region, Eastern Region, North Western Region, Northern Region, Southern Region and South Central Region. Each regional committee has 15 to 20 members and is headed by a person of eminence. These committees advise and assist the council in all aspects of planning, promoting and regulating technical education within their respective regions. AICTE has also established eight regional offices situated in Bhopal, Bangalore, Chandigarh, Chennai, Kanpur, Kolkata, Hyderabad and Mumbai for the efficient discharge of the council's functions within their respective regions. These offices act as secretariats of the regional committees and coordinate with the headquarters and the state technical education departments. Now, bureaus of AICTE Administration Bureau, Academic Bureau, Engineering and Technology Bureau, Finance Bureau, Management and Technology Bureau, Planning and Coordination Bureau, Quality Assurance Bureau, Research and Institutional Development Bureau. For each bureau, advisor or director is the bureau head who is assisted by technical officers and other supporting staff. Now cells of AICTE. Anti-ragging cell, CMAT cell, complaint cell, e-governance cell, GPAT cell, internal audit cell, JNK cell, legal cell, newsletter cell, NVEQF cell, public grievance cell, RTI cell and vigilance cell. The multidiscipline technical officers and staff of the council are on deputation or on contract from various government departments, university grants commission, academic institutions, etc. Now, let's discuss the objectives, vision and mission of AICT. First objectives. Promotion of quality in technical education. Planning and coordinated development of technical system. Regulation and maintenance of norms and standards. In order to modify the engineering curriculum, the current objectives of AICTE are First, to give more emphasis on design-oriented teaching, teaching of design methodologies and problem-solving approach. Second, to exclude outdated technologies and include new appropriate and emerging technologies. Third, to provide greater exposure to industrial and manufacturing processes. Fourth, greater input of management, education and professional communication skills. Second, vision. To be a world-class organization leading technological and socio-economic development of the country by enhancing the global competitiveness of technical manpower and by ensuring high-quality technical education to all sections of the society. Third, mission. A true facilitator and an objective regulator transparent governance and accountable approach towards the society. Planned and coordinated development of technical education in the country by ensuring world-class standards of institutions through accreditation, facilitating world-class technical education. Now, dear students, let's discuss the role and functions of AICTE. The power and functions of AICTE are, first, AICTE coordinate the development of the technical education in the country at all levels. Second, it promotes innovations, research and development in established and new technologies, generation, 
adoption and adaptation of new technologies to meet development requirements and for overall improvement of educational processes. Third, it undertakes surveys in the various fields of technical education and make forecast for the growth and development of technical education. Fourth, it allocates and disburses the funds on technical institutions and on universities where technical education is imparted. These funds are provided to these institutions on certain terms and conditions. Fifth, it formulates various schemes for women, handicapped and other weaker sections of the society so that they can excel in the field of technical education. Sixth, it lay down norms and standards for courses, curricula, physical and instructional facilities, staff pattern, staff qualifications, quality instructions, assessment and examinations. Seventh, it formulates schemes for the initial and in service training of teachers. Eighth, it fixes norms and guidelines for charging tuition and other fees. Ninth, it grants approval for starting new technical institutions and for introduction of new courses or programs in consultation with the agencies concerned. Tenth, it lay down norms for granting autonomy to technical institutions. Eleventh, it takes all necessary steps to prevent commercialization of technical education. Twelfth, it provides guidelines for admission of students to technical institutions and universities imparting technical education. Thirteenth, it takes steps to strengthen the existing organization and to set up new organizations to ensure effective discharge of the council's responsibilities and to create positions of professional, technical and supporting staff based on requirements. Fourteenth, it can declare technical institutions at various levels and types offering courses in technical education fit to receive grants. 15. It can advise the Commission for declaring any institutions imparting technical education as a deemed university. 16. It can inspect or cause to inspect any technical institutions. 17. It can set up a national board of accreditation periodically in order to conduct evaluation of technical education institutions or programs on the basis of guidelines, norms and standards specified by it and to make recommendations to it or to the council or to the commission or to other bodies regarding recognition or derecognition of the institution or the program. 18. It promotes an effective link between technical education system and other relevant systems including research and development organization, industry and other community. 19. It evolves suitable appraisal system for technical institutions and universities imparting technical education, incorporating norms and mechanisms for enforcing accountability. 20. It identifies institutions or centers and set up new centers for offering staff development programs, including continuing education of teachers. In order to conclude, we can say that AICTE has framed various norms and standards to regulate the technical institutions in the country for maintaining quality in these institutions. The AICTE Act is eminently suitable to perceive all needs of technical education and has been promoting technical education in the country. In order to meet the new requirement of reaching out to all sections of the society in any state, expansion in technical education is required. All the states need to expand on the institutional facilities so that excess equity and education for all can be realized. In developing countries, engineering education plays a vital role in producing good engineers for the development of the nation in all aspects. In India, there is an urgent need of critical examination in the development of higher education in order to compete in the rapid globalizing world. It is the great responsibility of AICTE to produce technical educated people who are skilled and who can drive our economy forward. It is only after that we can transfer our country from developing nation to a developed nation in a short span. With this, we conclude this very important topic of today. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. For now, it's time to say goodbye. Stay blessed. <music>